Hey everyone, wanted to do a video on my thoughts about gaming on the Intel Compute Stick, uh, the first generation. If you've watched any of the gaming videos on my channel, you've seen uh, the capabilities of the stick and, and, and what games um, you know it's been able to play and frame rates, etc. So kind of just wanted to do a quick little, just talk about it a little bit and see what you know expectations should be uh, for this Compute Stick. So uh, let's take a quick look. All right, before we jump into the gaming, let's take a quick look at the specs, um, specifically the SOC. So this is the Baytrail SOC. It's based on a 22 nanometer process. Um, this has the entry level Z3735F quad core processor, uh, which has a base clock of 1.33 gigahertz. It does burst up to 1.83 gigahertz. It also contains the generation seven um, Intel HD graphics. Now these are low power graphics. Um, so we're talking four execution units, 313 megahertz base, and a burst of 646. Although I've never seen it burst that high, I've seen about 620 um, from everything that I've seen. But regardless, it still uh, it still has a pretty decent uh, burst clock as well. So just to get a couple of the other specs out of the way, it also has um, two gigabytes of DDR3L memory. This is uh, running at 1300. And 33 megahertz. It is single channel. Uh, it also has a 32 gigabyte EMC, eMMC storage uh, with micro SD slot. Now taking a look at this stick, it does have a USB 2.0 port. Um, it also has on the on the same side the uh, the power in. Now this stick is um, it does come with a power adapter. However, it is a two amp five volt adapter. So we're talking the maximum amount of, uh, of potential usage here of about 10 watts. Now the SOC has an SDP of 2.2. Um, so we're probably seeing, you know, a max TDP vendor between four and five watts um, with, when performance mode is enabled. So Intel also gave us wireless uh, 802.11 BG and N. It is a it is a single band, it, so it only runs at 2.4 gigahertz on that band, um, and also shares uh, that same card with the Bluetooth 4.0 as well. So if you're using both, um, you're going to run into issues with connectivity, throughput, etc. I will say that's one of the biggest limitations of this generation, the Compute Stick, uh, that is that the wireless. Uh, antenna is just not very good. Now the Compute Stick came preloaded with Windows 8.1 with Bing. However, I did go ahead and upgrade it to Windows 10 with Bing. Uh, the majority of the gaming tests that you've seen the past uh, four or five months or so have been with Windows 10. So um, no problems with it whatsoever. However, I did have to install uh, Windows 10 on an SD card um, because the internal storage just wasn't enough, even with everything erased, um, it wasn't enough. So I had to install a 16 gigabyte SD card um, just to uh, download the ISO for Windows 10 and, and install it. Now you did hear me mention performance mode. Um, that is something you're going to have to enable in the BIOS. So when you uh, boot the stick up, go ahead and enter the BIOS and enable that. Um, it will alert you that uh, when using uh, the Intel Compute Stick in performance mode, you will have to use a powered USB hub. Um, I haven't really found a good answer why. I, I'm going to go ahead and say my my hypothesis is that the uh, the power that is dedicated to that USB 2.0 port is now then in turn dedicated to the Compute Stick's SOC. So it essentially allows the Compute Stick to run. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, use more power. Uh, to obviously enhance performance, it may even increase the thermal uh, throttling. I'm um, sorry, the TDP limits of the compute stick as well. I have done testing in performance mode and uh, with it turned off, and um, I just use Castle Castle Crashers as a, a kind of a benchmark. And with it disabled, I'm or sorry, with it enabled, I was seeing an increase of uh, of FPS anywhere from five to seven FPS. So. It's substantial, especially when you're trying to get as much as you possibly can out of this um, out of this compute stick. So, if you are looking to game on it, I would highly recommend um, enabling performance mode and getting a powered USB hub. Um, but in doing that, introduces a new problem, and that problem is is that it looks like the flying flying spaghetti monster. It's um, no longer a small, nice form factor. Um, it turns into something that it looks just some like 
a mess. And that's kind of what it is. Even for all my testing, it, it um, it's looked exactly like what you see here on the picture. It, it looks just like it. It's, it's not a pretty sight. However, uh, in order to get the performance out of it, you kind of need to have this type of setup. Um, I also, I do include the Xbox adapter. I do have um, a USB to Ethernet adapter. Um, I do have a keyboard and mouse adapter. Um, I do have an external uh, USB 3.0 flash drive to put all my Steam games on. So, you know, you, when, you're, when you're talking about that much uh, connections, you really need to have a powered USB hub. If you tried to connect it uh, without a powered USB hub and all those things, it would, it would perform terribly. So um, it's not something that you'd want to do without a powered USB hub. So if you plan on gaming on this and, you con and connecting all of those types of um, uh, devices to it, um, it, it's mandatory to have a powered USB hub. So keep that in mind uh, when looking at purchasing an Intel Compute Stick. So let's take a look at some gaming. Let's take a look at Rocket League. So first of all, what I wanted to also bring up is that at the bottom left-hand corner, we see something called an on-screen display. I do show this in the majority of my videos because I want the end user to see what the Compute Stick is doing while you're playing the game what the clock speeds of the, of the CPU cores are, what the GPU clock speeds are, what the CPU usage is, what the GPU usage is, the memory, video memory usage, all that stuff. I kind of like seeing it myself personally to kind of see um, if we're seeing some power limiting going on, maybe some thermal throttling, um, just kind of see how the, the SOC behaves when we're playing games. Now, one thing I've noticed using the compute stick is that I used to think that it used to thermal throttle. And um, after playing, you know, multiple games with it, I'm not convinced that it really is. It, the temperatures are actually very good. The active cooling on the stick um, works very well. I know some people complain about the noise. And honestly, when you're playing a game, you can't even hear it. If you're using headphones, using speakers, you can't hear it. It's, it's essentially inaudible. So I have no complaints about the noise. But the thing of it is, what I am seeing is some power limiting going on. Is uh, When the GPU is being fed 100%, the CPU suffers and vice versa. So very rarely do you see the GPU um, spike to its fullest burst speed, and same thing with the CPU, unless both of them are being utilized under 50%. So it can happen. However, if you're playing a game that's stressful like Counter-Strike, Rocket League, uh, even Terraria, whatever it may be, you're going to start, you're, you're going to see some power limiting going on um, when you're playing these games. But the temperatures really haven't been an issue, so no complaints there. So wrapping this up, I wanted just to say what my, my thoughts on the Compute Stick as far as a gaming device. Obviously, this is a low-end device. Um, at this point in time, the second generation is already out. So the first generation you can grab for well under $100. So the, my take on this device is that this would be a great device to bring over to a friend's house or put behind a TV in your house or you know an inexpensive monitor or whatever it may be. Play some fun indie games on. Uh, maybe use for Steam in-home streaming if you have that USB to Ethernet adapter, it's it's really good for you know playing some for, like I said going back to playing indie games. That's kind of where it really excels. So playing some multiplayer games like you know like uh, Lethal League, Castle Crashers, Nidhogg, um, games like that. They, the Compute Stick does an awesome job at playing those games. So I really think that's where the, the true strengths in this stick lies. Um, obviously, I've tried some 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 higher end games like Rocket League, uh, Counter-Strike, I wouldn't really consider them playable. And, you know, you can, but don't expect to be competitive and have a great time. It, it's possible, but I wouldn't say it's optimal. Um, so this is the first gen. I'm going to hopefully be picking up the second gen Compute Stick and checking that out. I do have some concerns about Cherry Trail, but we'll see once I grab one. Um, and also the Core M version is coming out after that. So interesting to see how that one performs as well. So that's kind of a wrap-up my thoughts on the compute stick i've been having fun testing it so it's been a pretty cool little device and um, if you guys have any questions about it in more in detail i'll try to test more games as they come out uh, as well so if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment section and uh, thanks for checking out the video